Bernard because the BJP is hoping to gain far more than just the 39 seats that they did last time around. And if they have to do that, they have to do well in the state of Tamar Nadu. It's the biggest single chunk of seats that have gone today to polls. Has that eventually happened? It's not just an increase in vote share, but are we looking at a conversion of vote share to seat share? Is it happening on the ground? If it is, then it's going to be tectonic. And if it is not, then it's going to be more of the same. And that means it's going to be much more of an uphill task from phases two to seven for the BJP to get to 370 or 400. But first, the story of phase one of the elections today. लगभग सभी सीटों पे कांग्रेस पार्टी को बहुमत मिलेगा। दस साल से बीजेपी सरकार दिल्ली में राजस्थान के लिए कुछ उन्होंने खास किया नहीं। We are hoping for a big margin victory. People of Tamil Nadu will give a resounding mandate to honourable Prime Minister Narendra Modi. They are not connected, so these visits are all, you know, stage management. That's all. All right, so let me explain this to our viewers on the magic wall as to why this phase, there are 102 seats that went to polls today, and why this phase is easily the toughest for the BJP in the, in the seven-phase election, uh, that is 2024. Now, in 2019, out of the 102 seats, the BJP won just 39, so about a third of the seats that went to polls. DMK won 24, the Congress won 16. The BSP back then wasn't in alliance with the Samajwadi Party. They had three, the CPI, CPM had four, two each, the LJP had two, and the remaining had 14. And I just want to run you through where the BJP got a bulk of this 39. Of course, they won out of the 12 seats out of 25, which went to polls in Rajasthan. They had won 11 out of 25. One seat went to Hanuman Beliwal, who was fighting with the BJP last time around, but this time uh, he changed. In Uttar Pradesh, again, very interestingly, out of the eight seats, the BJP had won only three. The BSP had won three and the Samajwadi Party two. So remember, back then they were in an alliance. So the alliance, the Mahagat Bandhan at that time, had five to the BJP's three. It won all five seats in Uttarakhand. It won one seat, which is the Udampur seat in Jammu. And of course, the BJP in Madhya Pradesh, except Chindwada, the remaining seats that went to polls today, they had won all of those seats. In Maharashtra, they had won two. Uh, in, uh, in Chhattisgarh, they had won one. And of course, uh, in the Northeast, there were a whole bunch of seats, uh, both the seats in Arunachal Pradesh and about three seats in Assam. So the BJP has a tough road to climb because there's 39 seats here in Tabernad. They did not win any there. Uh, there's, of course, in the Northeast, like I said, they won 14 out of uh, 25. Uh, in the ones that went to polls today, the BJP had 7 out of 14. So another 7 seats went to other parties. Uh, similarly, of course, in Uttar Pradesh, like I said, out of the 8 seats that went to polls today, the BJP had only 3. 5 had gone uh, to either the SP or the BSP. So there are pickings here as far as the BJP is concerned. And like I said, only 39 out of 102. Now, if you want to compare this to the other phases that are coming up, let's look at phase two and how the phase two seats panned out for the BJP last time around. Out of 88 seats, the BJP had won 51 at a vote share of almost 40%. So it's substantially higher than the seats that it had won in 2019. So the, uh, the rest of Rajasthan, they completely swept. They won all the seats in uh, Madhya Pradesh, a large number of seats in Maharashtra. Remember in Maharashtra, they were in alliance, both with, uh, uh, with the Shiv Sena, the United Shiv Sena back then. So all of these seats had been won by the BJP. The rest of the seats in Chhattisgarh. Remember, the Congress had two seats in Chhattisgarh. One was Bastar, which went to polls today. The rest of the seats that polled in the second phase, all of it, uh, the BJP won. In Karnataka again, 
other than three seats, one to the JDS, one to the Congress and one to an independent, all the other sweet seats the BJP swept. Of course, they didn't open their account in Kerala. So the BJP performed relatively much better in the second phase seats, 51 out of 88. Let's look at phase three. In phase three, again, the BJP did very well out of 95 seats, 74 of those 95 seats, which is at a vote share of almost 50%. Again, all of Gujarat seats, uh, they won. All of North Karnataka seats, they won. Uh, Southern Maharashtra, again, a large number of seats were won by the BJP. Of course, two seats were won by the United Shiv Sena. Again, in Chhattisgarh, Northern Chhattisgarh, one seat was won by the Congress. Everything else was won by the BJP. All seats in Madhya Pradesh. And even if you look at the UP journey, more and more, as you progress from West UP to East UP, more and more seats were turning saffron uh, last time around. So the BJP is more comfortably placed in phases beyond phase one. Phase one was its weakest phase, 39 they won last time. But this time, because the Prime Minister himself had set that target of Mission 370 and of course uh, 400 for the NDA, if they have to get to that, they need to have done much better in this round, much more than the 39 out of 102 that they got last time around. So have they done that? Is that what we are getting from the ground? Let me go across to our guests who are joining us. Guru Prakash Paswan is national spokesperson of the BJP. Dr. Shama Mohammed is national spokesperson of the Congress Party. Smita Prakash is editor of ANI. A. Saravanan is spokesperson of the DMK. And R. Rajagopalan, senior journalist, also joining us. Guru Prakash Paswan, I just laid out why of all the seven phases, this was the toughest phase for the BJP. What are you hearing from the ground? Because from what we are hearing from our reporters, this time around, there doesn't seem to be any wave. There is no Modi wave. What does seem to be happening on the ground is in quite a few constituencies, not just in the south, even in the north, in places like Churu, Junjunu, etc. It is Modi versus local issues. Saka, a very warm good evening to you and all my fellow panelists. And as we speak, there is a data that I have... Uh, uh, extracted from the website of Election Commission of India and it tells us the approximate uh, voter turnout uh, trend at 8 p.m. And very interestingly, you see West Bengal. West Bengal here is an exception because it has recorded a vote uh, share participation of 77.57%. Almost 80% voter turnout in West Bengal. That is something which is very telling. And I'm sure all you senior journalists, uh, Smita ji and everyone would uh, sort of realize that this uh, level of uh, turnout is very encouraging, especially for the Bharati Janta Party. Because we have been uh, focusing on uh, West Bengal for quite some time now. And also in terms of uh, Tamil Nadu, you see Coimbatore, last I checked, the data was 72%. And 72% turnout is something which is very encouraging. We saw the groundswell and the support in favor of our state president, the young and the dynamic leader, Anna Malai. Okay. And a very organic and a very natural support for his politics, for his leadership. So I think uh, we are definitely in for a very pleasant surprise, both in Tamil Nadu and in West Bengal as well. Okay, we Shama Mohammed, both issue. in Bengal and in Tamil Nadu, the BJP spokesperson says there's been increased voter turnout. Overall, for the state of Tamil Nadu, it's 72%, which is more or less where it was last time around. But yes, in the constituency of Coimbatore, from where their state president is fighting, there's been a substantial jump in voter turnout. And usually, when the voter turnout jumps, it has always been advantage BJP. Shama Mohammed. Yeah, so first and foremost, Zaka, I want to laugh at Tamil Nadu. I'm telling you, mark my words today, it is DMK Congress winning all the 38 seats. There is no Bharatiya Janta Party. There is no wave, nothing. I'm, I'm uh, Sarvanan is sitting here and I can tell you that there is no way they're winning any of those seats because this is not the type of politics what South India likes. As I had mentioned before, that nobody, uh, nobody is going to buy into about what you eat and what you don't eat. This time, uh, for us in the Congress Party, we have an excellent manifesto. The manifesto is something which we have asked the people of this country what you want, and that's what we've given. We've given fantastically to women. I mean, fifty percent reservation in government jobs, one lakh per year, and then of course the naysayers will say, "How do you do it?" We did it in Telangana, we did it in Karnataka, so we will definitely do it here. You know, 25 lakhs health insurance, uh, you have apprenticeship uh, 
money. No, no, hang on. Uh, Shama Mohammed, this is not a, a show where you can rattle off stuff from your manifesto. Please tell me what is happening on the ground. I'm telling you, there's been a 6 or 7 percentage jump in Coimbatore. There's a oh. big jump in Bengal. And the evidence so, of the last few elections show that when the voter turnout jumps, it has always been BJP. Please counter so, that. No, no. You you can say whatever you want, Zaka. I will not agree with you. No, this is a democracy. No, no, I I'm giving you facts. If you have counter facts to counter turnout, that, please go ahead. Vote, I'm, I'm giving voter, you my platform. Voter turnout can go up. That doesn't mean the Bhatia Janta Party is... Uh, is winning. I don't agree on that at all. You can come out with anything you say. Like you said, there is no Modi wave anywhere. I have traveled also across various states. People are very upset about unemployment and the price rise. They said, even, even if there is price rise, our salaries haven't gone up. One. Okay. Number two, the employment hasn't gone up, you know, a percentage of up. So, they, they say there is increase of price rise all over the world is what the Bhatia Janta okay. Party Wait, let me but let me okay, ask uh, Smita yeah, Prakash. Smita, uh, you know, one of the things, one of the things that we're hearing from the ground, not just in Tamil Nadu, but uh, for example in Churu, Junjunu, etc., in in Rajasthan, is local issues are mattering to people. People are talking about local issues, whether it is unemployment, price rise. It's almost like it's Modi versus local issue. Do you see that as a negative for the BJP, or do you see that even now a large number of people will say, okay, this is a parliament election, this is an election to choose the next prime minister, therefore our vote is for Modi, despite the fact that there are local issues that we are bothered about. See, you can't dismiss the local issues. I totally get that, Zaka. And people are feeling the pinch, whether it comes to jobs or whether it comes to price rise. Of course they are. Who do they see as an alternative? Who do they see who can deliver on that? Will they see that Modi, uh, another five years of Modi uh, is what they will deliver or will, is it going to be the India Alliance? The India Alliance has vaporized in many of the states. It doesn't exist. Just a short while ago, a few hours ago, Mamta Banerjee said in uh, West Bengal, she told uh, people in the audience that don't vote for the India Alliance. It doesn't exist. So if anybody comes and asks for a vote, which is the uh, communist, she said, if they're coming and asking you for, th for the vote because because they are part of the India Alliance. There is no alliance here. It's only in Delhi. So she said, don't vote for the Congress. Don't vote there. The same thing is said in Kerala. In Kerala too, they are scoffing at Rahul Gandhi and saying, what is he talking about minorities and things like that? That Congress is going to protect minorities. He didn't even allow the Muslim flags, the green flags in his rally. So please don't talk to us about that. So the co communists there are laughing at Rahul Gandhi. So what, what happens is, is, is uh, Rahul Gandhi seen as an alternative to Modi? Basically, it comes to that, the India alliance. But for the... Having said that, I am also going to say that it's extremely difficult for the BJP to reach the target that has been put forward for them. Because that means a 48 seat jump from the 352. So where is it going to come from? Because Maharashtra, uh, Bihar, Karnataka, Delhi, they already had a 90 plus strike rate in there. So where is it going to come from? It has to come in from the eastern belt, which is you come from West Bengal, you talk about Odisha, you talk about uh, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, uh, you talk about uh, Tamil Nadu, which I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, the uh, alliance here will laugh and say that it's going to be zero. But so many analysts have said that Tamil Nadu is going to be from four to double digits. Who knows? Even Prashant Kishore has said that it will be double digits. So if they want to scoff at uh, somebody who's delivered them victories in uh, many states, so that, so be it. But for that blockbuster win that BJP needs to make, it needs to make major dents in eastern and southern India because from that's where uh, 192 seats uh, MPs is where uh, they send in eastern and southern India. So last time BJP didn't win any in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Andhra Pradesh. They need to win from here. And 18 fewer seats, uh, 18 seats, fewer seats if they win from uh, uh, from uh, West Bengal and Odisha and Tamil uh, and Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. If they win 18 fewer seats from these places, they are in trouble because they will not be able to secure that major majority that they aim for. I, I, I want to go across to Saranan once. Uh, before that, I want to show on the magic wall again, uh, as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, this was a three-cornered contest. There was the 
DMK alliance, the India alliance, DMK Congress and other parties. There was the BJP, NDA alliance and of course there was the AI DMK. And you know, the thing that the DMK alliance was hoping was that because the AI DMK is putting up a performance and DMK leader after DMK leader was saying the primary contest is between ADMK and DMK. BJP is a third player in this, in this context. Let's look at the direct contest in those constituencies where it's a DMK candidate taking on an ADMK candidate taking on a BJP candidate. There they were hoping that the AI DMK will put up a strong performance in a way that it takes away the anti-incumbent vote or at least it splits the anti-incumbent vote. That includes of course Coimbatore where the ADMK seemingly had a strong candidate in a, a young gentleman named Singai Ramachandran. So it was a three-way fight, Coimbatore, neighbouring constituency of Nilgiris, again a three-way fight, uh, again Nebachi, three-way fight. Then you have, uh, in the again in the western sort of Kongu Nadu as it's called, Namakal seat, again three-way fight. Then you have the uh, neighbouring seat uh, of Perambalur, again three-way fight. Then uh, if you look at the north, north central, Tiruvannamalai was a three-way fight. Uh, so was uh, Velor, Kadir Anand, uh, the son of Durai Murugan. He won in a by-election, of course, uh, uh, again a three-way fight there. So there were about 10 seats, uh, including South Chennai, where Tamarisai Sandarajan was against Tamarichi Tangapandian, uh, where they were hoping it would be a three-way fight. And because it's a three-way fight, it will benefit the incumbent. Now, what we saw, Saravanan, at least the reports are beginning from Coimbatore, is in those ADMK booths, those ADMK stronghold booths, the workers were just not there. They were not turning out their vote. Now, either there is some kind of understanding or if the ADMK vote has not come out, then it means it's a direct contest between DMK and BJP, which is always advantage to the challenger, not to the incumbent. Saravana. <laughs> Zaka, whatever convoluted uh, argument you may put forward, the bottom line is the BJP is getting zero seats from the state of Tamil Nadu. The much touted Coimbatore. You saw how Mr. Anamalai was crying today evening. He said, one lakh votes have been deleted. Who is, who is supposed to take care of this vote list? It is the election commission and whose pocket is the election commission in? It is in the pocket of the BJP. And the same script is spoken by one other candidate from the central madras of the BJP. Which winning candidate will speak of giving excuses already that one lakh votes are missing in this and that? No other candidate. Of course, there were a lot of complaints about voter deletion, but none of the parties or none of the candidates complained about it. So, this will give you an inkling about a surge of voters. Yes, there were a surge of voters and those voters were the women. The women who have been the beneficiaries of the welfare scheme of the DMK party, of our leader, envisaged by our leader, Mr. M.K. Stalin. That is the reason for the surge and of course, the uh, right now the percentage is slightly marginally lower than what happened in 2019 probably 0.5 percentage or so so this is what it is and when you you no, but Saran, 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 once again uh, we are showing uh, constituency by constituency voter turnout numbers can we just go to the coimbatore number coimbatore right now 7 pm numbers the latest that we have is 71.17 in 2019 the coimbatore voter turnout was just 63.9 which means that's an almost okay. 8 percent jump Yes, clearly Zaka. something has happened in that constituency yes. for an eight percent jump. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what has happened. I'm telling you what has happened. We were following. We were having our ears on the ground. There were the women voters who thronged, who thronged the polling booths after 3 p.m. because it was so hot today. Morning, the numbers were very less all over the state because it was very hot. Okay. And and after 3 p.m. there was a vote surge. That is because of this. And when we are speaking about West Bengal, they were giving some theories. You were also giving some theories that uh, this has happened, that Mamta Banerjee has said there is no India alliance. See, we, are, we want Mamta Banerjee to win all the 42 seats in West Bengal. She is not going to support BJP. We want to exhort BJP. This is one of our strategies to ensure that Madam Mamta Banerjee wins all the 42 seats. So, we are, we are thumping out, we are edging out Modi in this election. Okay. The next Prime Minister is not from BJP. One, one second, Modi's let me, last okay. let me, let me, let me play, this play out what Saranan was referring to before I go to Mr. Raj Gopal and get his views on this. Uh, I'll, I'll give half a point to Saranan where he says if a candidate is winning, then he or she does not come out and blame. Saranan, you have to take this also. Huh? They don't come out and blame EVMs, just like they don't come out and blame 
deleted voter lists. Okay, so EM let's play out. Yeah, yeah, let's play out. Let's play out no, what no, Anamala said. Story, one second, one second. Yeah, like I said, half a point, story. half a point, because EVMs are also being blamed and voter deleted voter no, lists no, no, are also EVMs being blamed. Are a different story. Let me let me EVMs play that bite. Let me story. play that sound bite, the one that you referred to, and then I'll get Mr. Rajagopalan to respond to that. This is Anamala right after today's election. மனைவி <laughs> you know election commission is supposed to make the roles clean why is he blaming the bj uh, the dmk government any saravanan may be right i don't dispute with that because dmk is a stronger party in tamil nadu i do agree but the point is uh, zaka you were in tamil nadu for longer times for this elections second thing you just now in your editorial narration you pointed out eight constituencies 10 constituencies my point is i am extrapolating from your point that modi mission is successful in tamil nadu anti incumbency is very much visible on ground voters have re rejected task mark and drug the other one is the dmk's anti center stand has been rejected third 2024 election is between narendra modi and eight regional parties no congress in that so this this is no no uh, uh, mr rajagopalan uh, what we are trying to understand is no less than the prime minister went to tamil nadu 10 times since the beginning of 2024 right from the anushthan that he was having before the prime minister what is the result of it modi's outreach is that it is for my understanding is bjp will win at least 8 to 9 seats in tamil nadu okay. which all zaka, india zaka, just, just the projections are coming okay Sarana in, respond 8 yeah, to 10 seats the prime minister the prime minister i think has scored a self goal by coming seven times to the state really, of tamil nadu because the election is over don't look at on that. the ground so they the election is over momentum they the wanted a uh, 60 day long drawn out election is over. so what has happened is okay. the it is over the election is over busted. here in the state of tamil nadu this momentum that modi's speeches are insipid they are not inspiring any kind of motivation to anybody this is Election the beginning is the okay swetha wants to make a point then i'll go back to the two uh, political spokespersons yes uh, let me let me get uh, sir on one second yeah uh, let, let me get smita in yeah then after that congress and bjp yeah smita firstly i just find it really uh, arrogance of an another nature to say that a prime minister uh, cannot come to your state and it is it is a self goal by coming to your state and uh, what whether, whether they win or they the lose the fact is you it cannot is tell somebody not minister. to come to your state this kind of arrogance really is annoying and to say that ec is in the pocket of the bjp you are winning you're saying it's a complete sweep you had a complete sweep in 2019 modi was prime minister still then you are saying you have a complete sweep now and modi is still the prime minister how is the ec in the pocket of modi and you are winning a uh, clean sweep in 2019 as well as at this time sarunan yeah. sarunan yeah, quick response and then uh, we, 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 we are winning we are winning in spite of the election commission i can point a number of instances where the election commission was partisan Did not no, allow us. Right. No, no, but Sarunan, by that same logic. No, no, once again, Sarunan. Sarunan, Sarunan. By that same logic, by that same logic, Anamalai, Anamalai can claim, Anamalai can claim that uh, he is winning despite one lakh names being deleted from the That's voter rolls. Let me, let me, let me finish this, Zaka. See, when we talk about the election commission, what action have they taken? The Prime Minister, the, the BJP leader, Mr. Modi, is making. Uh, communally sensitive statements, which is done by the election commission. What action have they taken? They have banned Mr. Rangit. Uh, okay. Rangit. Hey, you are saying that Sanatan has to be eradicated. They are. It is like dengue and malaria. That is not communally sensitive. Yeah. Your leader said Sanatan should be eradicated, like dengue and malaria. Isn't that communal, Sarvanan? Zaka, we are talking about the election commission. After the model code of conduct, what has kicked in? 
We are talking about the elections and the election commission. Sanatana Dharma is in Suddenly it becomes okay. election commission. One minute you let, said communal. Let, let, me, let, let, let me go back. Let, let me go back to the BJP and Congress spokesperson. I want to move away from the state of Tamil Nadu for a second, please. Please. Again. Uh, out of the 102 seats that went to polls today, 39 plus 1, 40 are in Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. There's still about 60 plus seats that are outside uh, of the state of Tamil Nadu and, of course, uh, Pondicherry. So, Shama Mohammed, the point is in all of those states, whether it is pockets in Maharashtra, Madhya SP and BSP were in alliance. Today, SP and BSP is not in alliance. So, again, the same logic of the anti incumbent vote splitting, if it applies in Tamil Nadu, it should apply in uh, in uh, Uttar Pradesh as well. So it should be advantage BJP. Okay, so let me just uh, get to that. Before that, uh, I just want to say about Karna, uh, you know, Modi going multiple times. So we're going to win. That is not, I'm not in agreement. We saw what happened in Karnataka. He was literally, it was a Modi campaign in Karnataka. But unfortunately, he was more interested in Kerala story and various other things. So he lost. Number two, about... Uh, uh, you had said about the India alliance in uh, West Bengal. We knew from the beginning, West Bengal, Punjab and Kerala, three states, there will be a problem. But doesn't matter, even if they win there, it is in the India alliance. Those those number of seats which Mamta wins there or any other, any other state, it's going to come into the India alliance. Third, I would like to say the gentleman said the Congress is nowhere. Then why does the Prime Minister say during Ram Navami, the Congress people are eating meat and others don't. So if Congress is not there, the Prime Minister talks, if there is, there are 50 things he says, 45 are about Congress and the rest is not. The fourth thing I would like to say is there was some vote extra to votes in Kasarpur constituency yesterday. And in the, the election commission in, uh, for, for the Bhatia Janta Party, so the election commission said, no, no, those were just invalid votes. The machines are working pretty well. Again, it happened in Kanjarapalli today, the same thing. So again, what are they going to say? It's invalid. So when something like an invalid vote comes during the time elections for the BJP, the BJP is going to go out and say, no, no, how can that be invalid? We want to fight for it. So we need to know why these machines in Kasar Code as well as Kanjarapalli happened. It happened yesterday in Kasar Code in Kanjarapalli. So we need proper okay. answers on these things. I, I, I want to go to Guru Prakash Paswan because the last very, point, very interestingly, okay. Shama Mahmoud, once again, very interestingly, while we are talking, person, while we are talking about increased voter turnout in certain pockets in Tamil Nadu, certainly in Coimbatore, it's gone up about 7-8 percentage points, uh, even though the overall state is more or less where it was last time. Uh, in Uttar Pradesh, very interestingly, Guru I'm Prakash Paswan, out of the eight seats that polled today, we are seeing a substantial drop. In Bijnor, it was 54.5%. Last time, it was 66%. In Muradabad, it was 59%. Last time, it was 65.5%. In Muzaffarnagar, it was 54.91%. Last time, it was 68%. So clearly the opposite seems to be happening, uh, Pilibhit 60% this time, 67% last time. The opposite seems to be happening in Uttar Pradesh where there is a substantial fall in the voter turnout. Does that worry the BJP? Zaka, let me respond to my friends from the opposition parties for, uh, let me take a few seconds. So, we started in 1952. We have had two MPs uh, in the past. Now we are the world's largest po political party. So I think uh, humility is the best lesson in politics that anyone can learn and get inspiration from that. As far as South India is concerned, wow. the establishment of Singhal, the establishment of Singhal as a civilization assertion, it was done by the Bhatia Janata Party. And let me, let me, I did not, Zakat, I did not interfere. Yeah, yeah, Shama, one second. Shama, Shama, please, Shama, please, Shama, please, please, please. No, no, time, no, 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 that's okay, that's fine. Okay. He can say what he wants in, in his time. If there's factual, if there's factual inaccuracies, I will correct him, but let him make his point, please. Thank you. Talk about no, 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 let him let him talk. Let him talk, talk please. Let him talk, ma'am. Ma'am, why are you deciding? Why are you deciding why what he should talk about? Let him talk. No, no, let him talk. Let him talk. Thank you. Thank you. Guru Prakash. Thank you so much, Zaka. Thank you so much for exposing the arrogancy of the Congress Party. They think only they can speak. This is exactly the feudal mindset of the Congress Party that cannot tolerate an Adivasi ki beti as a president and a Garib ka beta as a prime minister and a Dalit person speaking at a panel in front of her. This is the pure arrogance of the Congress Party. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for exposing that. 
भारतीय it was the son of mr stalin who said the total eradication of sanatan dharma it was the bharti janta party that has spoken about telugu rural center across the globe it is the bharti janta party that is ensured that sengal reaches the indian parliament it is the bharti janta party that for the first time in the history of our indian politics we have a finance minister and a foreign minister from tamil nadu it is the bharti janta party today that has the largest number of member of parliament from karnataka it is the bharti janta party that shares power in pondicherry it is the bharti janta party that is constantly on a rise in south india we are speaking about the cultural okay. civilizational issues the issues that concern the people of L- south like india like i said and i, I want not I, I, I i want to leave the 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 south and tamil nadu aside for a second i'm just showing you the up numbers and like, like i said there's a substantial fall in the vote voter turnout does that not concern you i also want to ask my producers to pull out if they have the numbers from rajasthan and if it mirrors the fallen turnout in uttar pradesh but but go ahead uh, guru uh, isn't this a concern because if we have seen in 14 we have seen in 19 whenever the voter turnout jumps up it has always been advantage to the bjp no no obviously that is a concern uh, zappa and uh, when i was showing you the figures from west bengal i was absolutely concerned at the figure of my home state bihar that has mm. recorded a low of 47% vote percentage only which was about 52 and 53% last time it is obviously a concern and we showcase ourselves as the world's largest democracy and definitely prime okay. minister himself took on the mantle of increasing voter awareness increasing voter participation but this time it's a collective duty it's a collective responsibility and okay. we will ensure that the voter percentage the voter turnout rises it is let the, me the uh, l- let me ask my producers if uh, do we have the data for rajasthan the the voter turnout data as far as 7 pm is concerned so we're just putting that out so we have an interesting situation here and smita i want you to weigh in on this up the eight seats i think bihar four seats went to poll today uh we are seeing a, a depressed or a decreased voter turnout both in up and in bihar and these are states where the bjp maxed out at 162 or 63 out of uh, out of 80 last time in bihar the alliance 139 out of 40 so they would want uh, as much number of people to turn out uh, if not more uh, as compared to the last time again rajasthan numbers we're just playing that out if there is a pattern that in the north indian states for whatever reason Uh, we had Nistula Alwar, fifty-five uh, percent at seven p.m. It was sixty-seven percent in twenty nineteen. Uh, I, w- I want to bring up both Churu and Junjunu because again there were rebel candidates in both of those constituencies. If we can play out uh, those constituency numbers as well, but 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 a larger the larger larger question I'm asking: If in Rajasthan, UP, Bihar, in the North Indian states where the BJP maxed out last time, if the voter turnout is substantially lower, in in some cases by ten percent, maybe twelve percent, Bharatpur. 52% this time 59% last time is that a matter of concern uh smita prakash so let me first do up and then i'll do rajasthan uh in up uh 8 out of the 80 seats went to polls uh today in the previous general elections the bjp uh secured only 3 out of these 8 which was pilibhit kerana and muzaffarnagar now if you see the other so again we are talking in the same manner that in the first phase it's not really the strong uh, fort of the uh, yeah. bjp so now let's talk about what happens suppose uh, it is advantage of the opposition where is the opposition akhilesh has barely campaigned in this election there were no alliance rallies with uh, rahul gandhi he kind of made up a perfunctory uh, press conference with rahul gandhi last week he came uh, half heartedly for the uh, yatra which went through uttar pradesh uh, uh, priyanka gandhi did a little bit of campaigning but not really much so where is it happening and today in a rally that prime minister did today he said 
he repeated what he said seven years ago when he said that this alliance of these two shahzadas who what he called uh it didn't work seven years ago it's not going to work now he repeated that and look at uh akhilesh he did a press conference with rahul gandhi they talked about alliance but at the same time they can't even get together on they can't even agree on the name of the alliance rahul gandhi keeps calling it india alliance and akhilesh calls it pda they can't even get the name together on that and akhilesh there's a lackluster uh, 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 you know a move on his part for this election okay now let's come to rajasthan mm. as far as rajasthan yeah. is concerned again here you're not seeing much of uh, the top guns of the congress uh, coming and campaigning here it's a one on one it's congress and bjp they take on each other on the bjp front you're seeing everybody on the top rank coming and campaigning in rajasthan as far as uh, uh, the congress is concerned sachin pilot has taken over uh, the campaigning and he brings in priyanka there's hardly anything from malikarjun kharge hardly anything from rahul i don't even he's campaigned also as far as i know uh, in rajasthan it's only the uh, yatra which went past otherwise i don't think he's campaigned this time okay. uh, for the first round of polls so you are not seeing much of a campaign but what can happen is there are local issues which can turn around but the the victory that the bjp just won in the assembly elections has put uh, the congress in a bit of a trouble as far as campaigning is concerned they're divided when they go to the voters okay uh, so i don't have to quickly wrap up 30 yeah, yeah, seconds yeah, i got i got to wrap up after that yeah, yeah 10 yeah, seconds see, okay the, the, the election is not fought between the bjp and uh, how the leaders of the opposition are performing it is between the people of india and the bjp how the bjp has betrayed the interest and welfare of the people of india okay. the lpg cylinder price petrol price we are paying 30 rupees extra zaka okay. whenever you come to the studio every you are paying uh, no no but lpg price, price petrol price was high in 2019 also bjp still got 303 seats anyway let me let me allow me to allow me to understand okay I, i have to wrap up i'm completely out of time yeah 10 seconds 10 hmm. seconds yeah. if you take look at the food oil price it should be only 70 rupees but it is 100 rupees people are paying that okay all right i have to wrap up thank you very much uh, we it's a it's a rather noisy note to end on a uh, discordant note to end on but i think something is really happening uh, it, maybe it's the heat maybe it's local issues maybe people are thinking oh anyway uh, ana hai, hai to modi ko hi so why turn out so there is a substantial fall in voter turnout in rajasthan in the seats in up that went to polls today and of course in bihar as well what the reason for that is and what kind of impact that may have on the eventual result we don't know just yet we will know only on the 4th of june but it is indeed a matter of concern that in the three north indian states that went to polls today the voter turnout is is substantially lower in most of those constituencies up next ahead of the polling in karnataka which goes off on the second phase in uh, on the 26th of april i speak to two big news makers from either side of the political divide the deputy chief minister dk shiv kumar and the firebrand young member of parliament from south bengaluru tejasvi surya both of them i caught up with them on the campaign trail right on the other side of this quick break ready ready sir i will talk to english separately sir சந்திரனா <laughs> 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 ஜனநாயகத்தினுடைய <laughs> 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 
who will rule on him or her. Good people have to come forward. I have just exercised my democratic right. This is where my booth is, Uthupati in Karur. I am asking all people across the state of Tamil Nadu to come early in the morning and cast your franchise. And the, the goal should be to bring a good rule and to vote for a party that will bring development to the state. I can't speak anything else apart from this. We're in the Bangalore South constituency, the Lok Sabha constituency. The incumbent member of parliament, Mr. Tejasvi Surya of the BJP, is having a road show here in the Bangalore South constituency. Uh, Tejasvi, tell us what is at stake in this election according to you? The future of Bharat. The future of the youth of India. This is at stake because this election is about choosing the for the next five years. The Congress this, says that uh, this is about their guarantees versus Modi ki guarantee. What is the difference between Modi ki guarantee and what the Congress is uh, promising? Well, the Congress's guarantees one they are fake promises which never get materialized. Two, the entire economic thinking, the world view of the Congress in promising these objectives is a sure shot pushing of the state of the nation towards bankruptcy. And this will have a debilitating impact, a disastrous impact on the future of the youth of the nation. I will just give you one example. Ever since the Congress party came to power in Karnataka and started their freebie politics, irresponsible, ever since the Congress started their irresponsible politics, irresponsible economic policy in the state, the revenue expenditure has increased while the capital expenditure has decreased by 37%. By his own admission, the Deputy Chief Minister says that there is no money for development works. Since the last 10 months, not a single member of Legislative Assembly, not a single assembly, MLA has received even a single rupee of grant towards any developmental work in the state. They have cut down expenditure on urban development. That means they have taken away money from Bengaluru and they have used it to fund their freebies. They have cut down expenditure on education. That means the next generation's uh, educational infrastructure has taken a back seat. Everything to feed the freebie economic policy that they have promised. So what is at stake, the difference between the Modi uh, uh, guarantee. guarantee and the Congress guarantee is that while the Modi guarantee aims at empowering an individual in a sustainable manner and aims to make him less and less dependent on the government eventually, the, the Congress guarantee model is to make the citizen more and more dependent, a parasite on the government, so that he is always dependent on the handing out of doles. I do want to ask you, I spoke to uh, DK Shivkumar, the Chief Minister, Deputy Chief Minister today, and he said as far as Karnataka is concerned, neither Modi factor nor Ram factor will work in this state. What do you have to say about that? Well, uh, what can we say? For somebody who chooses to be delusional, somebody who chooses to deliberately not acknowledge the ground reality, the first thing a political leader must have is a clear understanding of the pulse of the ground. You have been following me on this road show. Yeah. We just passed through uh, the main streets. You saw the kind of response that people are uh, uh, welcoming us with. The name Modi has now become a mantra. People are chanting it. And the Jai Shri Ram slogans are evoking a sense of hope, a sense of self-confidence, a renewed glory. This is what... Uh, Jai Shri Ram. So, you are, you are witnessing a renewed sense of self-confidence in people. 
the 4th of june will answer a lot of these questions i do want to ask you as a representative of bangalore south some of the perennial problems here traffic infrastructure woes now water scarcity uh, what has been done about them in the last 5 years close to 1 lakh 30000 pro rupee worth of uh, close to 1 lakh 30000 pro rupees worth of infrastructure projects have gotten approved by narendra modi government for bengaluru the bengaluru suburban rail was pending from the bengaluru suburban rail was pending from the last 40 years for approval so many prime ministers came and went so many chief ministers came and went but it was narendra modi who approved the suburban rail for bengaluru they have seen prime minister's delivery they have seen his integrity his personal honesty and his incredible hard working nature that has inspired millions of indians all right i am very right. confident we will have 28 on 28 sure. sir ली सर अभुम नम अवर नम्बर जननायक जननायक This is where my booth is, Uttupatti in Karur. I am asking all people across the state of Tamil Nadu to come early in the morning and cast your franchise. And the, the goal should be to bring a good rule and to vote for a party that will bring development to the state. Yes, I can't speak anything else apart from this. And where are where are the Kendi? High stakes battle for Lok Sabha 2024. 28 seats from Karnataka. Who has the edge? Last time the BJP in 2019 it swept, and then in 2023 Karnataka Assembly election the Congress swept with 135. We have the Sutradhar of the Congress Party in Karnataka, the Deputy Chief Minister Mr. D K Shiv Kumar. Thank you very much for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. What, according to you, is the big issue, uh, Mr. Shiv Kumar, for this election of 2024? Mr. Modi says this is about making Vikasit Bharat, developed India, and that only he and the BJP can do that. any political party will have to have their confidence but one thing i would like to ask uh, the bjp and the national leaders of the bjp what they had promised what they have delivered they doesn't have face to ask the vote they could not deliver they could not change the lives of the people of uh, uh, this country whatever they said that they are going to bring black money and distribute it to the common man which is that black money they did demonetization after demonetization they said that they will secure black money what is the black money they said they are going to double the income of the farmers double the income of everyone what is that they doubled where they stopped the price rise inflation was too high nothing has happened they are looking at only on emotional issue we are looking at development of developing an individual so that is the biggest strength between them so bjp has doesn't have the voice to ask their votes 
but tell me mr shukumar uh, now the bjp is also saying they are giving modi ki guarantee it's like congress gave five guarantees last time they are saying it is revedi freebie you know state does not have the budget so modi ki guarantee versus congress ki guarantee that is why modi has understood that in a, a development of a individual is better first if anyone is strong if you are strong your family will be strong that is why he, he first he said that uh, we are spoiling the state and we are spoiling the financial now we understood that that is why he said he, he could not give any individual guarantees so he is speaking on guarantees on other level but that is the, he has copied our guarantee the word guarantee sir and they are not speaking on the party they are speaking about the individual that means it is modi without modi nothing no bjp is there in this country that is what they are saying, trying to send a message but we are not like that it is the party and the india alliance but if you look at karnataka you know comparison between parliament election and state election there is always a differential advantage for bjp you could call it modi factor or what you want to call it but about 10% vote extra the bjp gets how do you plan to contest that this time this time it will not happen like that because here we have been committed 10 years of modi rule has not changed any lives of the uh, people and in the 10 years of their uh, rule in the national level and there was a double engine government at mid point of time they could not succeed in that uh, double engine government also i think they have failed in it i think uh, in karnataka they will not gain whatever they are looking at let's talk about bengaluru city because you are the bengaluru development minister a uh, lot of talk about water scarcity this time summer is very hot and uh, peak uh, this time in bengaluru uh, what what do you do to address that problem what are you going to do to address that problem that is why i just fighting for work for water i want mekeda to delhi government is not supporting to make mekeda to even at the bjp was in the power in the national and the state level they could not change the lives or they did not give permission for mekeda to that is why i'm just fighting it now it is the nature no one can stop the nature there are more than 230 talaks which have been dried up more than 7000 borewells have been dried up in bangalore but still i am managing it and at least people are happy with the way the attention i have given it and and i am solving all those problems today mr rahul gandhi was asked why he is not uh, the, his candidature from amethi is not getting declared you are managing his vinard campaign i believe you are you were there few days back you're going again tomorrow Why, why is the Congress Party not declaring that he is the MIT candidate? No, it is the party, the national level party, and the uh, Central Election Committee to, to take a call. I am not uh, the right person to answer. I, if anything in Karnataka, I can answer. Mm. I am a president of the party. I, am, I can answer here. Since he is travelling all over the country, it is a border of my constituency, my state. So I am going to campaign for uh, to help him out. So tell me, uh, last time Car- Congress had just one MP, which is your brother, Mr. D K Suresh. This time, as State President and Deputy CM, uh, what is your number? What 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 gives you confidence that you will get more than one that you got last time? See, last time I I fully agree that uh, we the mandate was not uh, uh, good, and uh, we never expected. We thought that we will reach the double uh, digit. That did not happen. But this time. the double engine has completely failed and we have uh, delivered what we have spoken and we are going to get a good number uh, we have confidence that will reach uh, nearly 20 numbers பத்திரிகை அன்பர்களுக்கு எங்களுடைய காலை வணக்கத்தை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றோம் 
இந்த அற்புதமான நன்னாளில் தேர்தல் திருவிழா நாளில் நம் அனைவரும் கூட நம்முடைய ஜனநாயக கடமையை ஆட்ட வேண்டும் காரணம் ஜனநாயகத்தினுடைய வலிமை என்பது வாக்காளர் பெருமக்கள் மட்டும்தான் எக்ஸசைஸ் ஆர் டெமோக்ராட்டிக் வாக்காளர் பெருமகன் முடிவு செய்கின்றார்கள் தி வோட்டர் அல்டிமேட்லி டிசைட்ஸ் who will rule on adhe nerathila him or her good people have to come forward an unprecedented and historic election a vote that decides bharat's quest for greatness a mandate that paves the way for a billion aspirations a verdict the world is watching closely a battle for a rising bharat's glorious future battle for bharat elections equals cnn news 18 presented by r <laughs> அன்பான பத்திரிகை நண்பர்களுக்கு பத்திரிகை நண்பர்களுக்கு எங்களுடைய காலை வணக்கத்தை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றோம் இந்த அற்புதமான நன்னாளில் தேர்தல் திருவிழா நாளில் நம் அனைவரும் கூட நம்முடைய ஜனநாயக கடமையை ஆட்ட வேண்டும் காரணம் ஜனநாயகத்தினுடைய வலிமை என்பது வாக்காளர் பெருமக்கள் மட்டும்தான் எக்ஸசைஸ் ஆர் டெமோக்ராட்டிக் முடிவு செய்கின்றார்கள் அதே நேரத்தில் பொழுதும் ஒரு தொப்புள் கொடி உறவு இருக்க வேண்டும் சிந்தித்து எல்லோரும் வாக்களிப்போம் நான் என்னுடைய ஜனநாயக கடமை ஆட்டிருக்கிறேன் பூத் இருக்கக்கூடிய ஊத்துப்பட்டியில This is where my booth is, Uthupatti in Karur. I am asking all people across the state of Tamil Nadu to come early in the morning and cast your franchise. And the, the goal should be to bring a good rule and to vote for a party that will bring development. Hello namaskar this is first post and you're watching vantage with me palki sharma After today 